On June 4th, 1974, the Cleveland Indians ran one of the most tragic promotional events in the history of Major League Baseball, 10 Cent Beer Night. On that summer evening, more than 25,000 fans consumed 60,000 beers at 10 cents each. This led those drunken patrons to throw lit fireworks on the field, completely trash and tear up the stadium, and end the game with an all-out war against the players. So. How did this all happen? To answer that, we need to know why Cleveland would ever think to pull off such a stunt in the first place. And their crazy idea actually starts to make sense when you look at their circumstances leading up to the game. In the 70s, Cleveland was in a terrible situation as a city. During the decade leading up to 10 cent beer night, the city saw 600 factories shut down, resulting in thousands of workers being laid off. Poverty, drug addiction, and crime were at all time highs because of this, and over 177,000 people evacuated the city as a result. Case in point, the city of Cleveland was on the brink of explosion, and the remaining population could use a drink and they would get the perfect opportunity to grab a few in the summer of 1974. On June 4th, 1974, the Cleveland Indians held a promotion that couldn't be passed up. Fans who attended the game that night could purchase an unlimited amount of 12 ounce beers at 10 cents each. For $1, you could get a ticket in the bleachers for 50 cents and five beers. It was cheaper than the bar. But why would the Indians offer such an unreal promotion to begin with? Well, not only was the city of Cleveland struggling, but their baseball team was too. They were an atrocious squad that finished close to last almost every year, and as a result, no one attended their games. So, the organization needed a way to save baseball in Cleveland, which led to the idea of offering fans unlimited 10 cent beers. But see, on any other night, this promotion might have worked just fine. But the game 10 cent beer night fell on was against the Texas Rangers, Cleveland's number one arch rival at the time. Six days before the promotion, Cleveland was playing in Texas when all of a sudden a massive brawl spawned between the two teams. Legit punches were thrown back and forth, leaving many players gushing with blood. And after the fight, Rangers fans were raining down trash and beer on the Indians players. After the game, the Rangers manager Billy Martin was asked if he was worried about retaliation from Cleveland fans for their scheduled game six days later later, to which he responded, they don't have enough fans there to worry about. And just like that, Cleveland now had a new rival, and they were coming to play in a city full of poverty-written laid-off factory workers on 10 cent beer night. What could go wrong? Unsurprisingly, the promotion worked flawlessly. An average Cleveland Indians game saw maybe a few thousand fans in attendance, but 10 cent beer night brought in over 25,000 people. However, a large part of the crowd was made up of rowdy teenagers, as the drinking age back then was 18, and they were only there for the cheap beer and couldn't care less about their team or what happened at the game. Since you're able to drink at 18, that brought a whole different and a younger crowd to the stadium. Half the fans that were going to be there were there for the beer, not the Game. These fans also brought their own fireworks to the game, which was actually accepted in the 70s. So, before the first pitch was thrown, already drunk teenagers were lighting off fireworks and smoke bombs in the stands, giving the stadium a war zone ambiance. But despite the ruckus, the game continued as normal. However, it wouldn't be normal for long. Just two innings in, after the Rangers hit a home run, a middle-aged woman streaked the field and flashed her breasts to the crowd, then tried to kiss the head umpire. During the fourth inning, a fully naked man streaked the field after the Indians hit a home run. I remember one guy jumping out of the third base stands with his clothes in his hands. I'll never forget, he tried to get over the fence and, and he had no two black socks and when he came down, the cop had one sock in his hand and the other sock was on the guy's foot. It was also during the fourth inning that Cleveland realized they simply couldn't keep up with the number of beers being sold at the game. Fans were becoming more and more impatient as beer lines grew larger and larger. But instead of cutting everyone off, Cleveland insisted on putting the trucks of beer that were supplying the game right outside the outfield field fence for easier access. And humorously, each truck was armed with two teenage girls selling beers to the laid off hammered factory workers, all while fireworks and drums went off in the stadium. They had two girls working, one was collecting the money and one was trying to pour the beers and it just wasn't working. As the crowds waiting for beer kept growing larger and larger, the girls couldn't keep up with the demand. So they simply walked off the job, leaving unguarded trucks full of beer for the poor teenagers to raid. Fans were drinking beer straight from the taps, and some were even hauling taps off the trucks for their own personal use, all while security was nowhere to be found. We just start filling up our own containers. Some people flip the handle of the tap and just let it flow right into their mouths. The fifth inning featured plenty more streakers, most notably a father-son duo that hopped the outfield wall and mooned the Rangers outfielders. This stopped play again, and players on the field patiently waited as security chased down the pair around the diamond. 
the guys who ran across the field, a father and son team, and they dropped their drawers and mooned the crowd. Following that stunt, a play in which the Rangers pitcher was struck with a line drive to the stomach resulted in the upper deck of the stadium chanting, hit him again, hit him again, harder, harder. At this point, the game went from being crazy to pure insanity. Shortly after the line drive, Billy Martin stopped the game after a controversial call from the umpire. This upset the fans and provoked them to launch full cups of beer at Billy. He responded by blowing a kiss to the fans, to which the fans then responded by lighting fireworks and throwing them into the Rangers' bullpen. The umpire stopped play once again and ordered the Rangers to evacuate the dugout but the game continued on. As the seventh inning rolled around, most sober people had left the ballpark, leaving only the drunk people in the stands. As they got drunker and drunker off free beers, the fans continued to throw beer, batteries, tennis balls, golf balls, and torn up seats at the Rangers with increasing frequency. The Rangers first baseman estimated that he had 20 pounds of hot dogs thrown at him. I must have had probably 15 or 20 pounds of hot dogs thrown at me at playing first base. The one memorable thing I had thrown at me is an empty gallon jug of Thunderbird wine. I thought, this is, uh, this is not all fun and games, Dad. The eighth inning featured the Indians' own front office staff leaving the game as fans hopped onto the field and started to tear off the padding off the outfield wall. The security crew that was picking up litter on the field abandoned their task and went to left field to save the wall all while more naked streakers began running around the outfield. As a matter of fact, so many streakers entered the field that security just stopped trying to catch them, all while the Indians and Rangers continued to play baseball. Now there's another group of morons running around in the outfield. This has been a night of blatant stupidity. It was clear as day that the ballpark was on the verge of collapse but one streaker in particular sent the whole place overboard. The game's final inning featured a remarkable comeback from the Indians as they tied the game at five with a home run. They had the game-winning run on second base ready to score. But suddenly, a 19-year-old named Terry Urich thought this was the perfect time to grab a souvenir from this wild night. While completely inebriated, he hopped the outfield fence and attempted to steal one of the Rangers players' hats in the outfield. I just wanted to get his hat so I ran up behind Jeff Burroughs and I had it in my hand and then I dropped it and so I went down to pick it up and I looked up and he looked at me and I said oh hell he kicked me right in the thigh and he stumbled and fell down from the kick. Meanwhile Billy was watching this unfold from his dugout and he assumed his player was getting attacked so he ordered his team to grab bats and charge towards the fan. As the entire Rangers roster went into battle, the fans quickly noticed and responded by charging the field themselves to attack the team. Thousands upon thousands of fans wielding knives, chains, and clubs ambushed the Rangers and quickly outnumbered them. Now it's a full-scale riot. There has to be 200 people and more coming on the field. Oh, this is absolute tragedy. I have never seen anything as disgusting as this. Realizing that the Rangers' lives might be in danger, the entire Indians team grabbed their bats and helped fight off their own fans for the Rangers. As the street fight between the professional baseball players and the fans ensued, players swung bats at fans, while the rioters threw cups, rocks, bottles, hot dogs, and more at the teams. Many people were struck in the head with folding chairs, including the chief umpire, who started to bleed uncontrollably. And after a thrown hunting knife landed mere inches from his feet, he forfeited the game in favor of the Rangers and managed to escape the stadium. The two teams also managed to escape by protecting one another with their bats as fans tried to attack them. It had not been for the Indians players coming out to help us. It had been a real tragedy. And after a grueling 20 minutes went by, the Cleveland SWAT team showed up at the stadium and cleared the fans off the field with tear gas and riot sticks. In total, over 60,000 beers were consumed that night. There were seven emergency room-worthy injuries and a measly nine arrests. And understandably, Cleveland's 10-cent beer night went down as one of the worst promotional events in the history of professional baseball.